Hello and welcome. Today we are doing a question from Leak Code called House Robber. It is a medium. Let's get started. You are a professional robber planning to rob houses along the street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed. The only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security cam systems connected and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. Given an integer array nums representing the amount of money of each house, return the maximum amount of money you can rob tonight without alerting the police. So example one over here, we have one, two, three, one. And here we output four. We would rob the house at the very first index zero. So one and rob house three. So one plus three, we would get four. Otherwise we could have done two, one, which would only get us three. And example two, we have two, seven, nine, three, one. And we output 12 because we can do two plus nine plus one, giving us 12. Otherwise another possible Rob, the situation we could have done was seven and three, only getting us 10. So what's our first intuitive approach, right? What if we rob every other index? So either all the evens or all the odds, so either one, three, or two, one, or two, nine, one, or seven, three, you know, every other index. Well, that would actually break in this example over here. We would be getting 1 plus 1 plus 9, 11, or 9 plus 1 plus 1, also 11, when the output is actually 18. So we need to think about this a little bit differently. We want to see whether or not to rob a certain house based on how it affects the maximum amount of money we can rob. For example, if we are at index 0, what is the maximum amount of money that we can rob right now? Well, that would just be the index we are on, the amount of money we can get from the house we're on right now. So that would just be one, right? And what about at our next house? So at index one, well, that's going to be either the house we are on right now or the one before, because we can't get the adjacent ones. So the maximum amount of money at index one would be nine. Now, at index two, so if our input array nums is now 199, what is the maximum amount of money we can get? Well, it's either the maximum of what we'd seen right before, or the maximum of two before plus the one we're on, because we can get adjacent ones, right? So either the max from what we saw before, which is one, plus the amount we're on right now, so two, or just the max of before, which is nine. Here we want to go with nine. So if this is our entire input array, we would return nine. That's the maximum amount of money we can rob, and that would just be house one. And moving on, if we are at index three, well, it's going to be the max of what would have been if nums was two before our current index, right? So up until index one, what's the maximum amount of money we can rob? That's nine. Plus, skipping this house here, the index we're on. So 9 plus 1, 10, or just the max of everything we have seen up until index 2, which is 9. And that would be 10 here. So sort of the formula we're going to be using is nums of i equals the max of nums of i plus nums of i minus 2, or just nums of i minus 1. So we either get the maximum of the house right before us, meaning we're not going to rob the current house we're on because we can't rob adjacent houses, or we get the maximum of the house two before us and we can rob our current house. That's going to be how we're going to decide whether or not to rob our house and each index is going to store the maximum amount of money we can actually rob. So at index four, how much money can we actually rob? So if these are all the numbers we've seen, so it's either the max of everything up until two houses before four. And that's going to be represented by what's stored at index 2. So either 9 plus 9, which is 18, or just before our current index. So that's 10. We want to go with 18. And finally, our very last index, it's going to be either 1 plus 10, 11, or what's right before us, 18. 
18. And why does this work, right? Well, we're not actually storing whether or not we rob a certain house at these indices. All we're storing is the maximum amount of money we can rob up until the index. So over here, why we do either i plus i minus 2 is because we can't get the adjacent houses, but each index we've seen before already stores the maximum money we can get. So either i minus 2 plus i, the index we're on, or just the index before us, which stores the max up until then. So let's go ahead and code this up, and then we're going to run through one more example to make sure we really understand what's happening. So what we're going to do is loop through our entire input array nums. So for i in range and nums. And each index is going to store the maximum amount of money that we can rob. Well, again, if we're on that very first index, index 0, it's just going to be what's there right now. So we don't even need to start there. We can start from index 1 onward. So if i equals index 1, we can't really compare what's 2 below us. It's either going to be the index we're on or the index right before us. So nums of i equals max of what's in our current index or the one right before us. So nums of i minus 1. Else, if that is not the case, so if we are in index 2 or we're onward, nums of nums of i equals the max of nums of i plus nums of i minus 2 or just nums of i minus 1. And we go through our entire array nums filling every single index out. All we have to do is return the value at the very last index because the very last index is going to represent the maximum amount of money we can get from the very beginning of our input array nums up until the index we are on. And that basically covers the entire list if we're at that very last index anyway. So we do return nums of minus 1. And minus 1 basically just means the very last index in a list. So let's go ahead and run this code. Accepted and submit. And it is accepted as well. So talking about space and time complexity. Well, here we are just modifying our input array as given. So we're not really using any extra space. So that's going to be constant O of 1. And as for uh, time, we just go through our entire list once. It's one pass. So that is O of N for time. And before we leave, let's just do another super quick example to make sure we fully understand what's happening, right? So let's say we are in this very first line. Well, for i in range 1 onwards, so index is actually going to start from 1 onwards. If i is equal to 1, which it is, we're at the very first index, we're going to find the max of what we're on versus what's right before us. So it's 7 versus 2, 7 is going to stay. We go through the for loop again. Now we are in this else statement. So nums of i equals the max of what's here right now plus the max of what we've seen two houses ago or just what's right before us. So 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 versus 7, we go with 11. Move i down. It's going to be either 3 plus 7, 10 or what's right before us, 11. So we go with 11. And finally over here, either 1 plus 11, 12 or just 11. We go with 12. And all we do is return this very last number, which is 12, and we know that's the right answer here. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time.